Drawing Lewis dot structures of organic molecules can be kind of challenging when the molecules get very large. And so chemists have some shorthand for organic structures that help make the structure easier to see kind of a forest through the trees situation. So in this pentane example, I have the Lewis structure of pentane on the far left. And you can see, even with just a five carbon compound, it does start to get very cluttered. So the first thing chemists said was, well, organic chemistry is based on carbon. So I would just have to write the letter C over and over and over and over and over and over. So what they did is they said, anywhere in the vertex of this zigzag line, because as we'll talk about, these carbons have a 109.5 degree bond angle. So they're drawn as a zigzag line. Anywhere in that zigzag line where two lines connect, I'm just going to assume that's a carbon because in most organic molecules, 99% of those vertexes would be a carbon. So you get a simplified structure that looks like this one in the middle where I've left the C's out and the H's are shown. But that's still kind of cluttered and difficult to look at, especially if I get a complex ring structure like I have in a lot of biological products. So instead they said, well, you know, really, if we know there's a bunch of C's, then we really know that there's also more than likely a bunch of H's. And because we know that carbon always forms four bonds, we can look at the number of bonds shown, and we know any bond missing has to be a bond to a hydrogen. So instead of showing all three H's at the end of the pentane chain, they just show the end of the chain. And you would look at that first carbon and say, well, there's one bond shown, so I know there must be three hydrogens on there as well. So the atom at the end of the zigzag line is always assumed to be a carbon unless it is explicitly written out as a, another atom, like a bromine in this case. And in the simplified structure, a lot of times they leave out lone pairs, like the three lone pairs on the bromine. But if you were completing the structure, you would need to make sure that not only did you show the H's and count the C's, you would also need to make sure that you put any lone pairs needed on different hetero atoms. And this is where remembering your periodic table trends does come in handy, knowing that anything in group 17 would have three lone pairs, anything in group 16 like oxygen or sulfur would have two, and anything in group 15 like nitrogen or phosphorus would all have one lone pair. So here's a case where I have a branched hydrocarbon and this person is using their knowledge of organic chemistry to figure out how many hydrogens must be attached to each one of the carbons in this branch chain. So for example, on the top one here, the top in the center, there is three bonds shown. So that means that there must be one hydrogen also attached to that carbon. If I look down to the one on the far right of the structure, I notice there are two bonds shown, which means there must be two hydrogens attached. So however many bonds are shown, we're going to add enough hydrogens to get all of the carbons up to four bonds. Normally we do show the hydrogens if they are attached to a heteroatom, an atom other than carbon. So for example, we do show this H because it is attached to the O. That's important so that we know that that is an alcohol functional group. That is not a base. That is actually an alcohol functional group because it's not part of an ionic compound. It's part of a organic compound. And 
As I said, it is always a good idea to get used to adding those loan pairs back in when you think about Lewis structures. For one thing, in a complete Lewis structure, you absolutely have to have them or the structure is wrong. But also when you get into organic chemistry, a lot of that class is dealing with where do electrons move? How do reactions actually happen? The reaction mechanism, which is something we will discuss a little bit when we talk about kinetics. So here I have a couple of examples of how a Lewis structure is condensed to a line structure and a structural written formula. At the top here, I have this one butaldehyde. And I notice there are four carbons here, which tells me that is a butane base chain. And this functional group here is called an aldehyde. And because this kind of looks odd to the eye, a lot of times in an aldehyde that is very commonly labeled as an H. Again, when I come here, this simplifies that structure quite a bit. The lone pair on the N is often emitted, but we should remember that it is there. And that H is often drawn because it is attached to a nitrogen. Some other things you'll see sometimes are that on a one carbon group like this, which is attached to an oxygen, which makes this in fact an ether functional group. A lot of times those are written out as CH3, just because it is simplifying the structure, but still giving some important information. So. This is this structure here, which really should have a CH3 out here and does not, which is kind of an interesting thing to note. So for example, let's look at these line drawings and condensed formulas and see how we can convert them into a Lewis structure. So looking at this first one, I know that each one of these vertexes is a carbon. So I have one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five carbons. And then I look and I know that everywhere that there is not four bonds, I'm going to fill that in with a hydrogen until the carbon has four bonds. So this now has one, two, three, four bonds. This one here has two bonds, so I can fill in two hydrogens. I have the same situation here. I have two bonds shown, so I fill in two H's. Two bonds shown, so I fill in two H's. And on the end here, I only have one bond shown, so that means I need three hydrogens to fill in to get to a total of four bonds on each carbon. And in a situation like this, where I am given a line formula, I would not decide that there was a double bond in here. That would be a situation where I would do that if I had created the Lewis structure from scratch. Let's try this again. I have one, two, three. I see that this bond here is a double bond, so I'll draw that in, make it a little prettier. Okay, so the double bond counts as two bonds. So right here, this has two bonds shown. So in order to get to four, I need two hydrogens. So I'll have one here and one here. Then when I come to the center carbon, I have three bonds shown. So that means I'm just going to need one hydrogen to get up to four, one, two, three, four. And on the end here, I have one bond shown. So I need three hydrogens on this end carbon. So this last one has a hetero atom, which is interesting to see. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this kind of boring top one so we have a little bit of room to draw this. So I have 
a carbon at the end or at any vertex. So that means I have a structure here with one, two, three, four, five, six. So carbon, 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 carbon. One, two, three, four, five, six. This one has a double bond to the oxygen, and if it were not drawn, I would know that it needed to have two lone pairs. So now I need to fill in the H's. So here on the end, and really any time I have a carbon out alone on the end, I have one red bond shown, so I need three hydrogens to get to four bonds total. When I look at this carbon with the carbonyl, however, I notice I have one, two, three, four bonds already shown. So this is what's called a quaternary carbon. And I don't need to put any, C, any hydrogens on here because it has enough bonds in itself. So I'll leave that one alone. And I'll come to this one here. I see I have two single bonds shown, which means I have to have two hydrogens. Here on this carbon, I have three bonds shown, which means I need one H. And again, out on the end, one bond shown, so I need three hydrogens on each of these end carbons. So it's just really important that we know how to deal with these structures because it's going to matter in terms of their molar mass. If I don't have the right number of carbon, hydrogens and oxygens, obviously there's no way I'm going to have the right molar mass and that's going to snowball into the stoichiometry of my problem.